What the hell am I doing inside recording a video on a day like today? Today we are going to compare the Necron Catacomb Command Barge versus the Destroyer Lord in our quest to find out what is the best HQ. It's coming right up. Necrons! Nick speaking and welcome to this video and if you're new to the channel and you want to keep up to date with the wonders of Warhammer 40k then please subscribe and hit the bell button to turn on all notifications so you don't miss an upload. I hate motorbikes. Okay so today we're going to continue our quest to find the best Necron HQ in 8th edition. The Destroyer Lord versus the Command Barge in what I hope will be a fun and informative video. Okay so time to pit the Necron Destroyer Lord versus the Necron Catacomb Command Barge. Which one of these units will win? Well let's find out. Stupid sunglasses. Can't see a thing. Okay, so first of all, the points. The Destroyer Lord comes in at 110 points, and the Barge comes in at 124 points after a recent chapter approved reduction. Now you still have to buy an underslung gun for the Command Barge, plus the Staff of Light on the Overlord in it. Of course, you've got to buy a Staff of Light for the Destroyer Lord as well. However, he is cheaper in points and he's going to win the first point in this category. Next is the stats line. The Destroyer Lord moves 10 inches and his weapon skill and ballistic skill of 3. However, the Barge moves 12 inches and his ballistic skill and weapon skill 2. So they both have Strength 5 and Toughness 6, and they both have a 3 plus save. However, the Destroy Lord has 4 attacks, and the Command Barge is just 3. That Command Barge, though, has 8 wounds, compared to the Destroy Lord's 6. The stats line of the Command Barge is definitely better, and earns a point for the Command Barge in this category. Okay, so in terms of keywords, both of these units have the Fly Special Rule, a very handy special rule and great to help you fall back out of Assault. Now the Catacomb Command Barge is a vehicle, which means if you're up against a Dark Eldar, their poison weapons are going to have trouble wounding you, only wounding on sixes as opposed to fours. So I'm going to give this point to the Catacomb Command Barge for their keywords. Now both of these units can take relics and the relics can actually enhance both of these units a lot. However first of all before we talk about the relics let's have a look at the weapon options. Now both of these units come with the Staff of Light for 10 points. It has three shots and is okay in close combat. Both units can change the Staff of Light for a Hyperphase Sword, a Void Blade or a Warsai. Overall, without taking the relics into consideration, the best weapon of choice is probably the Warsai. However, if you are going to take the Staff of Light, the Command Barge is probably our best character to actually take the Staff because it has the Fly Special Rule, it can fall back from Assault and it can shoot, and it's shooting on a 2+. Plus. And it's this weapon skill and ballistic skill of 2+, plus which is going to outshine the Destroyer Lord's 3+, plus weapon skill and ballistic skill, even though the Destroyer Lord has one extra attack. So I'm going to give this point, bearing in mind they have the same weapon options, to the Command Barge. Okay, so on to war gear options, and the first one is the underslung gun on the command barge. Now this is the Gauze Cannon, it is a heavy weapon. However, if you take it in the Sotek Dynasty, you can then move without any penalties, making good use of that ballistic skill too. However, in other dynasties, you're still going to be hitting on threes with those penalties. So it's still pretty good. However, you may be better off in other dynasties to take the Tesla Cannon. That will hit on twos and any sixes would give you two extra hits. 
Now there's no AP on that particular gun, however you could go for the Mefret dynasty, so at half range you get minus one. Now this underslung gun is very useful, and of course you've got the Overlord's weapon on the vehicle as well. Not only that, but it doesn't deteriorate as it takes wounds, and that is going to earn the Command Barge another point. Now, both units can take the Resurrection Orb, however, I'm a firm believer that at 35 points for a once-use only piece of war gear, that's just too expensive. However, if you were to take the orb, either one of these units is going to be the best unit to actually put the orb on. And that's down to their fast movement, allowing you to get into position to make best use of that three inch bubble. Now, both of these units have the orb, so there's going to be no points change for this category. Phylactery, phylactery, that'll do. Now, both units have living metal, however, the Destroyer Lord can take Phylactery, and that's only 10 points, giving him a D3 living metal, almost an auto-include for that model. Plus, the Phylactery opens up some other options, which we're going to talk more about in a minute. However, for now, that's a point to the Destroyer Lord. Okay, so the Catacomb Command Barge has Wave of Command, which is basically my will be done, but at 12 inches. Now couple that with its 12 inch movement, and that is a big range. Allowing you to give an infantry unit plus one to hit, advance, and assault rolls. This is very powerful, especially on Tesla Immortals. Now couple that with the Faron Wills stratagem, allowing you to do Wave of Command twice, and that is very powerful. So powerful that actually I'm going to give two points for the Command Barge. Yes, two points for this category. Now the Destroyer Lord has Haywire Hatred, allowing him to re-roll ones to hit. Now you're probably going to take the Destroyer Lord in the Novok Dynasty, so in close combat you're going to be re-rolling all of the hits in the first round of combat anyway. However, if you're not taking the Novok Dynasty or you've got a shooting weapon on the Destroyer Lord, then this could actually be quite useful and earns the Destroyer Lord another point. Now the Destroyer Lord also has United in Hatred, allowing you to re-roll the ones to wound in shooting. Not that great if you geared him up for close combat. However, this ability also affects destroyers and heavy destroyers that are within six inches of him in the same dynasty. Now you're probably gonna be using the extermination protocols on one of your destroyer units per turn anyway. So if you only have one unit, then this isn't really gonna be that useful. However, if you have more than one destroyer or heavy destroyer units, then this is definitely a good thing. So we're gonna give the Destroyer Lord another point for this ability. Now the Destroyer Lord comes as standard with a phase shifter, giving him a four plus in vulnerable save. The Command Barge can gain a four plus in vulnerable save, but it has to do a relic to do it. So that's another point for the Destroyer Lord. Now the Command Barge has Quantum Shielding. Couple that with its eight wounds and three plus save, and it can be quite a survivable tank. Now bearing in mind that Quantum Shielding also works in close combat. Now with the right relics, the Command Barge can be even more survivable. However, it does explode on a six plus if it is destroyed, but that isn't going to stop it getting a point for Quantum Shielding. Okay, so on to the relics. Now the Destroyer Lord has two main options. The Blood Rites, giving you D3 extra attacks, coupled of course with its four attacks base. So you're looking between five and seven attacks. Now that is pretty good. However, you could also take the Nano Scarab Casket. Now you have to take Phylactery to get the Nano Scarab Casket Relic. However, like I said, that's almost an auto-include anyway. Now this Relic allows you to gain D3 wounds back 
in your opponent's turn as well as your turn and that makes this guy very survivable. Not only that but the first time this guy is killed you're able to roll a dice and on a 4 plus he comes back and he comes back with d6 wounds. Now you also have the option to use the Resurrection Protocols stratagem for 1 CP. Again on a 4 plus bringing this model back for a second time, although it's only with one wound. Now what I would suggest you do is make sure you leave a couple of command points to help you with the re-rolls of getting this guy back. Now I like to use this guy in the Novok Dynasty and taking the Novok Warlord trait. That allows any units within six inches of him when they're rolling to hit on a six to get an extra hit. Now bear in mind that those units are probably going to be in the Novok Dynasty and they're going to be re-rolling their hits as well. So that could give you quite a number of extra hits in combat. And I think it's these relics and warlord trait abilities that proves that the Destroyer Lord isn't just a babysitting unit for destroyers and heavy destroyers. He is more of an attacking unit and to send him out with wraiths or scarab swarms can actually be quite a good idea and gives him another point. Now the command barge also has some very good relics, the main one being lightning filled. That gives the unit a 4 plus invulnerable save adding to its survivability. Not only that but at the beginning of the fight phase enemy units within one inch will take a mortal wound on a 4 plus. Put him in the Sotek dynasty with an underslung gauze cannon where there's no penalties, add in hypological strategist warlord trait allowing you to gain your command points as you use them and this is a very good HQ choice. However you could take him in the Mefret dynasty giving him the Voltic Staff relic extending the range of that weapon by 6 inches and allowing you to snipe characters. Now the staff will be strength 6, minus 3 and does 2 damage. Not only that but on a 6 to wound you do a mortal wound. Now in this combo you definitely want to take the gauze cannon as the underslung gun taking full advantage of the minus AP of that weapon when sniping characters, albeit hitting on threes, but threes is still very good. Now both of these relics is going to earn the command barge another point. Okay, so next up is the fun factor. Now I'm an old school Necron player. I was brought up playing the Destroyer Lord, and for me, it is incredibly fun to play that model on the table. It has some historic history to it. Is that a right phrase? Anyway, I really like the Destroyer Lord, so I want to give that a point. However, the Command Barge, no doubt, is also a very fun model. It's very survivable, it can cause your enemy lots of problems, and it's just fun to have that on the table. So I'm actually going to give both units a point for the fun factor. Okay, so there you go, the Command Barge wins by two points, and to be fair, there aren't many people that will argue with that result. The Command Barge is an awesome HQ. However, the Destroyer Lord is definitely not a unit to be overlooked. With the Novak Dynasty and close combat buffs with his Relic, helping other units like Wraiths and Scarabs, well, this guy is a lot more than just babysitting destroyers and heavy destroyers. And if you haven't tried him yet, I seriously suggest you give it a go. And if you have played the Destroyer Lord or the Command Barge, and there's some extra points you want to add to this video, then pop them down in the comments box below. Now, if you want to see more best Necron HQ videos, I've got a playlist with all the other videos just there check that out and if you're not subscribed yet start now and hit the edit beer icon. Beam me up!